Hi, this is Mike Aben here with some more KSP math. Today I want to calculate the ideal altitude for a communication network about the moon. For this video, what I mean by an ideal network is a network that provides full coverage and good signal strength using only the most basic antennas in the game. The kind of thing you might build fairly early on in a career mode. This is a video I've been wanting to do since my video on relay networks, especially considering the fact that in that video, I actually put my relay satellites into too high of an orbit to communicate effectively with smaller antennas. In this video, we're going to make use of what we know about calculating antenna ranges, a little bit of orbital mechanics, and even some old fashioned Euclidean geometry. So with that, let's do the math. Once again, our focus will be on the moon, which interestingly, is actually the easiest one to mess up. Once you have the principles down, you should be able to apply this to any other body, but you'll likely find they won't take nearly as much thought once we get the moon out of the way. First, we have to make a decision on the form of our network. In real life, many Earth-based networks use a swarm of satellites in low orbit. This allows the satellites to be smaller, the launch is cheaper, and give the ability of small, mobile antennas on the ground to pick them up. But launching this many satellites is too much of a pain in KSP. On the other extreme, we can put satellites into a geostationary orbit, or I guess a geostationary orbit if you're around Kerbin. Though the satellites would be bigger and the launch is more expensive, this permits ground-based antennas to be fixed and thus more powerful. Though this is a fun thing to do in game, and a good topic for a future video, for communication relays in KSP it's completely unnecessary. Besides, synchronous orbits around some bodies, including the moon, aren't even possible as the altitude of the required orbit lies outside of that body's sphere of influence. We're going to be building the simplest network that still provides full coverage, and that would be three relays equally spaced in identical orbits, thus forming an equilateral triangle. We'll start by setting a lower and upper bound on the altitude of this orbit, and then we'll dial it in to the ideal altitude. The minimum required altitude is actually remarkably simple to remember. It's always identical to the radius of the parent body. In the moon's case, that would be 200 kilometers. This can be shown with some trigonometry, but the Euclidean proof is just too short and too pretty for me to let it go by. This circle of radius R represents our parent body. And this circle, the orbit of our three equally spaced communication satellites. As already mentioned, these three points are the vertices of an equilateral triangle. If we bring the radius of the orbit down too far, the sides of this triangle will pass through the parent body, which means that communications between them will be cut off. This is clearly no good. As such, the lower bound for the altitude of the orbit will be when the sides of the triangle just touch the parent body at single points. We say that the sides of the triangle are now tangent to the parent body. One property of tangents to circles is that they are perpendicular to the radius of the circle at that point. Let's join one of our satellites to the center and highlight the two triangles we just made. These two sides of the triangles have to be equal as they are both radii of the parent body. In addition, the two triangles share this side, but this side is a special side. As these are right triangles, this side is the hypotenuse of both triangles. So these two triangles have equal hypotenuses and another pair of equal sides. That is enough for us to know that these two triangles are in fact identical. In geometry, we would say that these triangles are congruent. In fact, we know that all six of these triangles are congruent. That means that all of these angles around the center are also identical, which makes each of them 360 divided by 6, or 60 degrees. Highlighting just one triangle, we can see that we have two of the three angles, and knowing that all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees gets us that the missing angle must be 30 degrees. We're almost there. I'm going to add the mirror image of this triangle beside it and ask this question. What kind of triangle is the single combined one? Since each of the angles are the same, this is another equilateral triangle, meaning that all three sides are the same. 
The bottom side here has a length of 2r, which means all the sides are 2r, including this one, which is the radius of our orbit. Thus, the altitude of the minimum allowable orbit must be r, the radius of whatever the parent body is. Now clearly this is an idealized situation, and you would be ill-advised to actually put your comm network into a 200 kilometer orbit about the moon, but it's nice to have a lower bound to keep in mind. Alright, what about the upper bound? Well, there's the sphere of influence of the moon, which is at an altitude of 2,230 kilometers, so clearly we can't go above that. To be completely honest, this is where I messed up in my initial relay network video. In that video, my communication satellites held just a single HG5 high gain antenna. Though the weakest relay antenna in the game, I knew it had a strong signal with even a tier 1 deep space network. So I figured it would be effective in any orbit about the moon. What I didn't consider was their ability to communicate with each other and, more importantly, to communicate with other vessels in the network. It's time to set a goal for our network. I want any vessel within the orbit of the relays to be able to communicate with the network with a signal strength of at least 80% using just a single Communitron 16 antenna. First we need to know what is the maximum distance that vessel can be from a relay. Thankfully we get a simple answer to that question thanks once again to Euclid. Here we have our three satellites in an orbit of radius r. From our previous proof, we know that this is an equilateral triangle. Well then so are all of these. It's pretty easy to see that the furthest point away from any relay that is still in the circle and not at the center of the moon are these three points, which are clearly r away from the nearest relay. Wow, well that was quick. <laughs> so our max distance from a relay is the same as the radius of the orbit. Isn't geometry great? Okay, it's time to get into calculating antenna ranges. If you find yourself getting a bit lost here, you may want to check out my video on the topic where I go over it more slowly and in greater detail. The HG5 has a power rating of 5 megameters, while the Communitron 16 is 500 kilometers. To determine the range at which these two can communicate, we multiply their power ratings and take the square root of the result. This gets us 1,581 kilometers. Now this represents the very outside limit of their range where the signal strength between them is virtually zero. We would like a minimum signal strength of 80%. The equation KSP uses to calculate signal strength is this, where x is one minus the ratio of the separation distance to the range. Putting 0.8 in for the desired signal strength gets us this equation, which is brutal to solve by hand, but with Wolfram Alpha to the rescue, we get that the x equals about 0.71. We can now rearrange our other equations for the separation distance, and substituting in, we can get our desired maximum separation distance to be 458 kilometers. Anything beyond that, and our signal strength drops below 80%. Now remember, this is also the radius we want for our orbit, which means the altitude for that orbit is only 258 kilometers. And it's here that we start to see that things aren't quite ideal. The big problem is that 258 kilometers isn't much above our absolute minimum of 200 kilometers. If our satellites drift a bit from their ideal positions, we could end up with communication outages. This will make maintenance of the network a potential pain. Also, the orbit has a period of just over two hours, which will make it tough to insert the relays using the phasing technique I used in the relay tutorial. For all these reasons, we gotta do better than this. Thankfully, the fix is pretty easy. Instead of a single HG5, let's go with two. We use this formula to calculate the combined power of the two antennas, where P sub S is the power of the strongest antenna, Sigma P is the sum of all the antenna powers, and C is called the compatibility factor, which for most antennas, including the HG5, is 0.75. Recall that this antenna has a power of 5 megameters. The two together then have a combined power of 8.41 megameters. This now ups our communication range with the Communitron 16 from 1,581 to 2,050 kilometers. 
Going back to our max distance calculation with this new range, now gets a maximum separation and orbital radius of 595 kilometers, which is an altitude of 395 kilometers. Now this is better. Now you may be beginning to think, why not three HG5s, or four, or ten? I'll leave it to you to do the math, but you'll discover that adding more antennas quickly runs into a point of diminishing returns. I'm going to stick with what I've got. So you've now narrowed the range of orbital altitudes from 200 kilometers to 395 kilometers. But what is the ideal altitude in that range? This is where orbital mechanics leads to a clear best answer. An orbit about the moon at our maximum altitude of 395 kilometers has an orbital period of 3.14 hours. If you watch my tutorial on inserting a relay network, you'll know that a period that is divisible by three is helpful, and an orbit at the slightly lower altitude of 377.35 kilometers has a period of exactly three hours. Well, exactly to the nearest second at least. And this is it. This is our ideal relay orbit. Recall that the insertion process I used requires a phasing orbit of exactly two-thirds of this period, which is two hours. A bit more calculating gets that our phasing orbit needs to have a periapsis of 103.85 kilometers and an apoapsis, of course, at our target altitude of 377.35 kilometers. Wow, we just spent a lot of time talking about the moon but I did allude to all the other bodies being much simpler. For example, our next body out would be Minmus, but it only has a radius of 60 kilometers, meaning that the minimum altitude for our network is only 60 kilometers. This gives us a lot more room to maneuver. Secondly, Minmus being almost four times distance from Kerbin will have you already thinking about upping your antenna power to at least a couple of HG5s before you've even begun to think about communicating with other antennas in the network. Again, a pair of HG5s can communicate at an 80% signal strength with a Communitron 16 at a distance of 595 kilometers. At Minmus, this orbital radius gives us a period of over two days, which gives us plenty of options for setting up our insertion. So there's no need to go beyond what we've already done with the moon. And once you go interplanetary, the antenna power required to communicate with Kerbin will far outstrip what will be needed for local communication. So you won't even have to think about that part. No, it's our closest neighbor that provides the biggest opportunity for a communication snafu. And with that, I see myself coming to the end of this video. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps even useful. And as we admire the result of all of our efforts, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.